I'm looking at the moon hologram or cluster nucleus. It's 3 a.m. Just looking at the movements, the irregular movements and the erratic movements of the moon hologram. I'm far away. So it's hard to tell unless it really jumps. It, it's when you get close that you can really see the different erratic movement, which is highly irregular for an object moving through space at a given orbit around the planet. I've been taking some uh, photos uh, that are very interesting that really show the moon hologram. Well, uh, see that jump? It showed uh, as a star that it is. Uh, these are photos. Yeah, you can just see the rays and the and the glow it's emitting. And it just uh, brighter and brighter and getting hotter. Their uh, the ores are just layering it more and more. It seems like every layer is a different dimension and uh, this is inhabited by all kinds of various and different beings but I think they're all words. I don't know if they, you know, realize that they exist in different layers or in different layers but uh, I assume that they do because they're all building that thing all together, uh, layer by layer, and they're multi-dimensional. I think every one of those layers is a dimension, and this is a multi-dimensional space, and being that orbs are multi-dimensional organisms and can penetrate and uh, go through and exist in every one of those different dimensions I see no reason why they shouldn't be aware of uh, every layer and uh, all the life forms within each layer but uh, who's to say what ours know uh, this is just a uh, you know guess from observation I can't really uh, know that for sure and that's what it appears to be like, at least to me. They're in a fast pace tonight. Uh, you see the even like this is just like a I don't know more than a half moon, less than a full moon. Looks like an egg, the cosmic egg. Uh, but. Uh, 
Boy, it's bright and it's got a lot of plasma, especially down in that part. And this is uh, the orbs around it. They're nice and colorful to me. And that's right below it. See that whole layer there? Or lots of layers. See them? That's on top. See the top? That's right off the top surface. See how they're streaming in? Some are streaming out. Some are coming in through that uh, electromagnetic membrane, and others are just leaving. That are charged up. And you can see the difference in color. You see the difference in color. Watch. See the brighter ones. Are the ones that are going out and these darker ones and they're the short showing up in red and darker and they're uh, trying to get in that's a big cluster right there that white one. And those are big black clusters. They're all like uh, very thick, uh, thick parts where there's a lot of words. More than just, you know, more than just on the outside actually. They're packed more to closely together than on the outside. That's why this is a cluster nucleus. And uh, all these, uh, wow. And that's the hottest part to me. Right there. Okay, they're all moving counterclockwise at a high velocity. That's why it's uh, making so much energy, because uh, of the velocity tonight. It's higher than normal, and that's all plasma, and that's the hottest part. It's like a cluster within a cluster nucleus that's making a lot of energy. So is this one. There's a few spots, but uh, wow, you see it jump? I'll just let it go and see if it's going to jump some more. Tonight it's rising. Actually, it should be going down towards the horizon, but for some reason, 
everything is all wrong the way it's supposed to be moving I mean uh, that this area should be going down towards the horizon before sunrise but uh, it's it's rising yeah you see it moving up but sometimes it takes like leaps and just goes up There's that uh, membrane and the electromagnetic field that holds the nucleus together. And there's a whole lot of big ores right there on the edge. Wow, you see that one fly by? But look at the size of these orbs. See that one fly by straight up there at the edge? How fast they travel, 4,000 kilometers, before you can blink. Uh, it's nothing for them. That's, that's their low velocity. And that's like uh, snail pace. Uh, they're not even uh, glowing or anything. And they're traveling that fast. Imagine if they were, uh, you know, all charged up and uh, zooming around, all lit up. That's when you see them here, then there, then there. And you don't see how they got from here to there to there. Uh, they just seem to appear and vanish. That's how fast they move. You think you're imagining things. See, it's moving. Uh, it's very hot right there. Uh, that's, uh, see that door cluster? It's like uh, surrounded by plasma, but it's the one that's turning. That one right there. The big darker one. Okay, so they don't all have to be. Uh, you know, red hot flight to be uh, spinning fast. They can all do it. Wow, you see that? Look at that. I got hands on camera. That's really, uh, yeah, it doesn't want to show those big orbs right there. They're causing all the heat. See the size of those? Look at the ones that are lit up. That's the same kind of size orbs, but just lit up. See, I, I got the right spot. Now it's gonna start jumping around to try and avoid that, showing that. Watch when the other orbs come up. I hope I have it lined up right. But if they come up, it's gonna jump out of the way. No, I don't have it lined up right. Okay. Yeah. There she goes. See those big orbs right there? That's a sensitive spot to me. Wow. Those are big motions. No matter how you see it, they're uh, huge jumps, and half of them are going the wrong way. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, see those big orbs right there? That's a sensitive spot tonight. Wow. Those are big motions. No matter how you see it, they're uh, huge jumps and half of them are going the wrong way. Definitely under intelligent control. These things are really smart. You see every time you point to the, the those orbs right there? Watch, it's not gonna show them. See, I even missed them and it's still not gonna show them. Because it's not sure if I have them on the camera. the size of them. Ooh, see that little flyby? See it avoid being in the camera? How quick it made that turn? I don't know how they know I'm filming them from way over here, but boy, I guarantee they know. But you see it made that turn just to get out of the way and off camera. That was really a sharp turn. These are up a little higher now. Let's see if there's anything they need to worry about there. Yep. There too. See, wherever there are very large orbs, they don't want to show the... Okay, I'm shooting in a super fine high definition 1920p by 1080p. And I have a uh, sepia on, and I have a. Uh, I put in another feature, it's uh, a lens uh, focus sharpener, sharpening. Uh, I can uh, improve like the quality of the lens or the sharpness of the lens meaning improving the clarity uh, by, uh, I don't know, maybe 50% of all that, uh, I mean 50 extra percent, it's already like a super clear lens, so sometimes that's too much. Uh, the last video I had, I uh, had to uh, blur it because it was too sharp and when you uh, like stabilize a video like that then you see all the orbs shooting all over and, and they make lines because they go so fast so many in a row just continuously that they make lines so it looks like there's something the matter with the video but there's nothing wrong it's just that you know you can't go real close when you have the image really sharp. You, you have to view it at uh, like at this range that I have it set for. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's too sharp. Ooh, you see that one fly by? That's the third one tonight. Okay, definitely aliens. <laughs> from a different dimension <laughs> out of this multi-dimensional space called the moon. Uh, I call it the moon hologram or cluster nucleus because that's, that's exactly what it is. But uh, all these are alien organisms. Somebody commented that uh, Jesus made the moon. Uh, I want to straighten that out. Uh, no, he didn't. Uh, 
okay. The moon was here a long time before Jesus. It uh, was here a long time before the earth. So, uh, no, Jesus did not make the moon. And this has nothing to do with him. These, these are alien uh, organisms that uh, created uh, the universe, the stars, our moon, and who knows what else. It looks like everything else, uh, but you know they have nothing to do with Jesus. Uh, these are definitely alien organisms, and uh, I believe that they're uh, like the first organisms, uh, you know, from a primordial uh, time, the early time in the universe after the Big Bang. Uh, these were the entities or beings or organisms that uh, first uh, started populating the universe and they have a high rate of uh, you know creating populations like they, they had a population explosion uh, right after that because uh, they seem to uh, multiply like crazy in many different ways. I think they can replicate, they can clone. They can, uh, you know, even have uh, like natural offspring, which I've seen around here on Earth. But they, they have like many different ways of uh, just increasing their populations, and their population rise is always at a phenomenal level. It, it's in excess of anything uh, known anywhere. How fast these things uh, multiply. See, they don't want to show those big orbs. It's going to send another one, I bet, uh, flying by just to uh, cause a distraction, because that's what the, those are doing, trying to distract from that. There's something important there, but uh, I have this tiny little screen, and uh, I forgot my glasses inside. Uh, I'm not going to go get them now. I can without the glasses. But there's no way I can miss those big orbs flying by, that's for sure. Maybe if I go back, I'll be able to see more. I can go like the length. Those are big jumps the wrong way too. It's just going in a counterclockwise direction, I mean the pull and the tugging and and, and the jumping and the sometimes it shakes. I'm surprised tonight it's not emitting the pulse, especially when I come, you know, right into these big orbs here that it doesn't want me to really check out. I'll let it ride out. There's the pulse. Ah, I spoke too soon. Okay.
he tries to always turn off the camera with that pulse. But uh, I have a setup that I won't allow it to do that anymore. But that's how I used to turn it off, blow it up and everything. Not this one, but a few before. But uh, it can't do that anymore. And I have a safety uh, in case it puts too much power my way. It's gonna just, uh, you know, kill the switch, but not, not get to the camera. So, it's gonna keep trying until it builds up enough power, and who knows what's gonna happen then. By then I'll have to, you know, consider looking for another camera. Hopefully by then I'll take a lot of videos of this one, make it worth my while. It's a lot of orbs. Just uh, See all the ones shooting around that electromagnetic field? Everything on this whole entire moon hologram is created by them and all of the things outside of it, like out here, is all them. And that's space, like, you know, that's just uh, orbs in space. And uh, they're all alive and well and very smart. And they fooled us for such a long time. It makes you wonder, you know, if our entire universe is just a hologram. Uh, because uh, these things are what make, make it up. And, uh, they work on electromagnetic energy. I mean, that's electricity. That's what computers work on. You know, and all the microchips and uh, they work on electromagnetic principles too. So, uh, I think it's gonna be like a supercomputer creating all these stars and the moon and the entire sky and our, our entire universe, even us, who knows? Uh, you know, everything could be a hologram, a well, multi-dimensional hologram, but nonetheless a hologram. It may not be real in a sense of, you know, solid. The solid part might be in your head or my head, or anybody's head, because that's, you know, we think, because uh, in the reality we exist in, it seems solid, but it could be just like this, you know, all these orbs moving around like atoms, very fast and uh, creating different, uh, images and different structures and different everything and changing them every, uh, you know, every so often, but very fast. Things don't last long because there is such a high vibrations, frequency and velocity and uh, everything is happening so fast that uh, nothing lasts very long. These things, they change. Ooh, look at that one. That's a big orb. That, that's one big orb. That's a real big one. Boy, they're getting bigger and bigger.
Yeah, so what I'm gonna start doing is taking some uh, like time lapse photos, but like quick, not make them last forever, uh, so that there's not too much blur. I'll try and get them as clear as I can to uh, show even in a photo that the moon is definitely a star. Uh, just the glow around it and uh, you can see the same glow around other stars uh, that are in the vicinity because uh, in a few photos I took you could see a lot of them and they glow the same or some glow the same way the ones that are close enough I'm just going back and forth to, uh, you know, see what kind of oil configurations there are tonight. They're all new every night. I didn't do this last night, but just the night before, it was all different. Every night is different. I'm not touching the camera by the way. It's doing that all by itself. All these ores in that nucleus act as one entity. Once they join the, a nucleus like this, they act as one entity. When orbs you know, are in a cluster, that cluster becomes one entity. And then all the ores cooperate and uh, do whatever is necessary for that cluster, and they do the same uh, sort of thing for the nucleus. They all cooperate and uh, do what's best for the nucleus. Uh, the cluster that's behind the nucleus and all around it, uh, the parent cluster, the ores there, do the same thing you know they uh, do what's best for the parent cluster even the nucleus is supporting the parent cluster with energy so it's recharging the orbs in the cluster in the parent cluster so that they can you know keep on living and travel wherever they have to go uh, but uh, They do this without any kind of, you know, visible tools or uh, any machines or anything. Uh, whatever they uh, do is, or make, they make out of their own, their own bodies. Because they're energy organisms, but they're able to convert that energy in themselves into matter. So if they need an appendage, they make one. If they need a tool, I guess they make one too. Whatever they need, they make it. But, you know, out of themselves, not out of anything else. And that's what's really, yeah, that's what's really amazing about these or, uh, organisms or entities, since they're intelligent entities. Each one of them, even the small ones that you don't see at all, they're very smart. 
it all is fine. And this is intelligent motion because it's, you know, moving the entire nucleus, which is our moon, out of the, you know, it's moving like certain parts out of the way, which it doesn't want to be filmed. So when you look at it like that, then, you know, you have to say, that uh, it's intelligent. And this is not the first time that that's been going on. It's been going on for years. Look at those jumps. I mean, that, those are major jumps. Yeah, that's like a thousand mile jump right there. In the wrong direction. Look at that. Well, at least we saw three go flying by real fast. But that one was the best that, that avoided uh, being in, in the, you know, in, in the camera or in the view. The way it cut that turn almost at a right angle made an arc actually uh, to get out of the way. But that was a quick turn. for sure. I don't think we have anything that can turn like that at that speed. It's a big one right there. Look at the size of that thing. So, the orbs are getting bigger. That's the observation for tonight. And there's more of them flying around, you know. And they're showing up flying around. Usually that happens only once in a blue moon. Tonight there was three. So, you know. Boy, 
that is the most sensitive point to make. Let's see that shape. Okay, it's not going to want to show that. Okay, no matter what I try and place it on that, it right away moves it out of the way. Man, I wish I had a bigger screen. I wish I had my glasses right now. Boy, those look like some kind of appendages, but I can't tell. I don't want to start guessing. I should have had my glasses. I'll look at it later. I don't know what that is, but uh, I get all kinds of uh, impressions right now. But I can't say anything for sure because I can't really see clearly what it is. It's another, wow, that's another uh, sensitive part that orb that does the, causes a blur and uh, sends that pulse that's right there at the edge. All of those ones at the edge there, they send a pulse. And there's a whole pile of them. Okay, so that's what it doesn't want to show. And that whole pile of the big ones. Okay, this is unusual because normally you don't get to see them just that many all, all in one place. It's really jumping around to me. See that? Okay, whatever's happening on the moon hologram is happening tonight. Because <laughs> I, I don't know exactly what's happening, but man, it's going to be happening tonight. I don't know what's there exactly, but it, uh, it's definitely a no, no go zone. Let's see if this is a clear, I can get a clear image of that. Look at all those orbs. So I uh, Okay, all of these are different. See those? Where those orbs are right there and all the black ones around them. That was never like that before. No. setup is different tonight. Let's see how those are set up. You know, like that. Okay. 
it's that open ring where they shoot past like real real quick. between the larger orbs so it's not really gapped or opened because there are orbs always shooting by really fast they're just uh, smaller so when they blow you see the you know the whole ring And it doesn't look like it has any gaps, but it has gaps. That's a lot of large yours. Okay, this is a much higher number of large orbs and I all seem to be right there in the center but they could be, uh, you know, in the middle of the cluster somewhere deeper inside but tonight at least they're visible on the outside part over here that's really active see that that's just orbs creating all that plasma the way they interact with one another you see and their velocity and their vibrations frequency counterclockwise motion and things like that but it's just orbs so they're the what gives the moon its light and its glow and its uh, energy it's not a sunlight reflection okay it was never a sunlight reflection it glows from within the cluster or the, uh, the moon hologram or cluster nucleus the glow is from within uh, and it's not a reflection of any sort look at that orb the way it's blinding It's a lot of energy that thing is pumping out. It's pumping out the equivalent of like thousands of atomic bombs, but in a form of electromagnetic energy, like heat, light, and a high uh, electromagnetic charge an electric charge like uh, you know very strong lightning strikes billions of them all at once uh, and that's just that one big orb and they like uh, bounce that energy back and forth between one another and amplify it and that's how they create more it's not just more orbs coming in to the nucleus and you know working harder they bounce it back and forth and amplify that energy and even situation like that can occur it doesn't have to be a big orb like this that's you know 500 kilometers it can be a smaller one a real small one
because they're, each orb is a cluster within itself. You can do this. I had a little orb turn off my camera right from a tree over here. Well, that was 30 meters or so away. And the orb must have been like uh, at an atomic scale. Uh, and it worked very hard and it, it uh, spun and spun and spun until it turned out the camera and I, I have a video of that, it's on my channel, you know. So every orb can uh, create that kind of energy, not this high or this powerful, but for their size, they do very well. Each one can, uh, each orb can create a whole lot of energy for its size. You know, compare it, compare it to its size. See, that's a lot of orbs. You see them going counterclockwise, but those are all different layers going right through the nucleus. Now you can really see it because those orbs that are deeper inside, they're glowing, and you can see them. So now you can see that there are more layers than just the top. I'm glad that came out because uh, that's usually not seen on a regular basis. See those orbs that are deep inside? And that's what I'm talking about. There are layers and layers and layers. You see how they keep boiling out uh, all the way out to the top? But it goes deep inside many layers. I don't know, billions of layers. And every layer is a dimension. And that's how these things are building a star, by layering the thing one layer after another and making it a you know larger and larger multi-dimensional space and adding more and more dimensions to it but they're all energy dimensions which can uh, you know become matter if the orbs choose to change them into matter because they're intelligent and they they have a way of doing it and they know how to do that and how to control doing that so that uh, there's no looking at or where there's no shortage of big orbs tonight. First flying orbs right across and now really big ones and then all charged up look at how many and of course they don't want to show those so they're going to move it a thousand miles over the wrong way I hope all this goes out because it's gonna, even though the moon hologram is so bright, you know, I have to use a filter and everything. And I hope it comes out because uh, this is gonna be like in super fine high definition with a sharpened uh, image even more. Uh, it'll make this camera into like a 25 uh, lens or something or more, I mean, you know, as far as clarity. If you make it too sharp, then you get the lines. So, 
I have to be careful about that because I never know, you know, what part I'm going to have to stabilize because of all this movement. I'm not, I'm not doing this, you know, it's just the way the Mongolian you know, behaves. It's very erratic and irregular. And definitely not just an object in space. And this is a smart object in space and a living object in space. And it's a star. Okay. I'll let you look at it from far away before I go. It looks like an egg. Okay. Almost. Anyway. Close. That's close to an egg. The cosmic egg. Your moon. The new star. Uh, the whole setup is different tonight. Let's see how those are set up. You know, like that. It's that open ring where they shoot past like real, real quick. Between the larger orbs. So it's not really gapped or opened because there are orbs always shooting by really fast. They're just uh, smaller. So when they glow, you see the, you know, the whole ring. And it doesn't look like it has any gaps, but it has gaps. It's a lot of large doors. They're everywhere. Okay, this is a much higher number of large doors. And I all seem to be right there in the center. But they could be, uh, you know, in the middle of the cluster, somewhere deeper inside. But tonight, at least they're visible on the outside. Like, uh, yeah, right there, and this part over here. That's really active. See, that, that's just orbs creating all that plasma they interact with one another, you see? And their velocity and their vibration frequency, their counterclockwise motion and things like that. But it's just orbs. So they're the, what gives the moon its light and its glow and its uh, energy. It's not a sunlight reflection, okay? It was never a sunlight reflection, okay? It, glow, it glows from within the cluster or the, uh, the moon hologram or cluster nucleus. The glow is from within. Uh, and it's not a reflection of any sort. Look at that orb. Way. It's blinding. Yeah, 
that's a lot of energy that thing is pumping out. That's pumping out the equivalent of like thousands of atomic bombs, but in a form of electromagnetic energy, like heat, light, and a high uh, electromagnetic charge, an electric charge, like, uh, you know, very strong lightning strikes, billions of them all at once. Uh, and that's just that one big orb. And they like uh, bounce that energy back and forth between one another and amplify it. And that's how they create more. It's not just more orbs coming in to the nucleus and, you know, working harder. They bounce it back and forth and amplify that energy. And even a situation like that can occur. It doesn't have to be a big orb like this that's, you know, 500 kilometers. It can be a smaller one. A real small one because there each orb is a cluster and within itself you can do this I had a little orb turn off my camera right from a tree over here but that was 30 meters or so away and the orb must have been like uh, at an atomic scale uh, and it worked very hard and it, it uh, spun and spun and spun until it turned off the camera and I, I have a video of that, it's on my channel, you know. So every orb can uh, create that kind of energy, not this high or this powerful, but for their size, they do very well. Each one can... Uh, each orb can create a whole lot of energy for its size, you know, compare it, compare it to its size. See, that's a lot of orbs. You see them going counterclockwise, but those are all different layers going right through the nucleus. Now you can really see it because those orbs that are deeper inside, they're glowing and you can see them. So now you can see that there are more layers than just the top. I'm glad that came out because uh, that's usually not seen on a regular basis. See those orbs that are deep inside? And that's what I'm talking about. There are layers and layers and layers. You see how they keep boiling out uh, all the way out to the top? But it goes deep inside many layers. I don't know, billions of layers. And every layer is a dimension. And that's how these things are building a star, by layering the thing one layer after another and making it a you know larger and larger multi-dimensional space and adding more and more dimensions to it but they're all energy dimensions which can uh, you know become matter if the orbs choose to change them into matter because they're intelligent and they they have a way of doing it, and they know how to do that, and how to control doing that, so that uh, there's no, look at that, or, boy, there's no shortage of big oars tonight. 
first flying orbs right across and they're really big ones and, and all charged up look at how many and of course they don't want to show those so they're going to move it a thousand miles over the wrong way. <laughs> I hope all this goes out. Because it's going to, even though the moon hologram is so bright, you know, I had to use a filter and everything. And I hope it comes out because uh, this is going to be like in super fine high definition with a sharpened uh, image even more. Uh, it'll make this camera into like a, a 25 uh, lens or something or more. I mean, you know, as far as clarity. If you make it too sharp, then you get the lines. So I have to be careful about that because I never know, you know, what part I'm going to have to stabilize because of all this movement. I'm not, I'm not doing this. You know, it's just the way the wrong you know, behaves. It's very erratic and irregular. I'm definitely not just an object in space. And this is a smart object in space and a living object in space. And it's a star. Okay. I'll let you look at it from far away before I go. It looks like an egg. That's close to an egg. The cosmic egg. Your moon. The new star. Uh, and uh, this is Super Mushrooms. Thank you for viewing. Have a good morning.